الله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Brothers and sisters in faith حياكم الله um, I really appreciate it when I come on the stream yard and I see people already there um, It, it uh, pleases the heart and the eye to see punctual individuals, individuals that are keen on learning and therefore they come before, before the time, the allocated time, as opposed to coming late, which always comes with its uh, taxes, comes with the tax of missing out on the introduction, not having the notes of the beginning of the class, and you're just all over the place. So more power to you. Those of you who um, are the early birds, and keep it up and encourage others and family members to follow suit. Uh, so where are we? Well, we are in Al-Aqidatul Wasitiya Al-Sheikh Sabah Taymiyyah. We're not too far from completing the book, perhaps 100 something pages, inshallah. That's not a lot, to be honest with you, because we've already covered a lot of this book. Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, awalan wa akhiran bi fadli wa manni wa judi wa karami alayna. And uh, now we're going to go straight into the hot topic because it is a hot topic. Qawluhu, hey, yeah, buddy. Now we're going to speak about um, the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah and what Shaykh Al-Sabit Tabiya said. وَيَتَبَرَّعُونَ مِنْ طَرِيقَةِ الرَّوَافِضِ الَّذِينَ يُبْغِضُونَ الصَّحَابَةَ وَيَسُبُّونَهُمْ Hey, طيب. Um, so let's see how many of you can uh, translate يتبرعون or give me a place in the Quran where it appears. Doesn't have to be in the same um, form. Could be in another form. Another derivative of the word, of the root word. Can anyone think of an ayah or something along those lines that has the word yatabarraun? All right. Well, why are you thinking about it? Uh, let me translate everything. Declare yourself free from. Yeah, well, that is excellent, yeah, Ju Juwairiya. That is a proper translation. But I was looking for a surah or an ayah. Oops, I gave it away. Yalla mashi. Ibrahim alayhi salam. Bara'un. Okay, good. Surah At-Tawbah, yes. Actually, Surah At-Tawbah is also known as Bara'a. Surah At-Tawbah is also called Bara'a. Uh, uh, also, it appears in, I believe, in Surah Al-Baqarah. And multiple surah. Mashi, all of you are on top of your game, mashallah. So I'm not going to take uh, more time on that particular subject. So, so um, they basically, another way to, to translate يتبرعون uh, besides saying declare yourself free from is to disassociate. So they disassociate themselves from the path and the way or the methodology of the rawafid, the rejectionists who hate the sahaba and verbally abuse them. And <laughs> Allah, I don't understand how, how you could have a religion how could you be upon a religion wherein you hate the companions of Prophet and you verbally abuse them? You you uh, uh, revile them. Al Rawafidu, in case you don't know who they are, Ta'ifatun Ghulatun fi Aliyin bin Abi Talib wa Ali al Bayt. The Rawafid are a, a group that have gone to extremes. In their love for Ali bin Abi Talib and the household, the members of the household of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Pay attention now. They are among the most misguided of the people of innovation. The Rafida are among the most misguided of the people of innovation. And they are the most hateful towards the Sahaba. May Allah be pleased with them. وَمَنْ أَرَادَ مَعْرِفَةَ مَا هُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الضَّلَالِ If you really want to know what is it that they're upon, what they are upon of misguidance, to what degree, 
فَلْيَقْرَأْ فِي كُتُبِهِمْ وَفِي كُتُبِ بَنْ رَدَّ عَلِيهِمْ Let him read the, their books and the books of those who refuted them. And I, my brothers and sisters, can cut through the chase and tell you that I've delivered an extensive, uh, I hope and pray that Allah accepts that humble effort, a well-researched uh, lecture on the Shia, titled Wolves in Sheep's Clothing, wherein... I went out of my way to cite from their books with the references and the page number, if I remember correctly. And then I proceeded to refute them with the Quran and the Sunnah. Where no one can say, ah, oh, no, what you're saying is not, that's not what the Shia believe, that's not what we believe. No, 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 no. I got it, I got it for you from the source. From the source. Check out that lecture. It's an old lecture. But it's one of those lectures which used to take weeks of preparation. Weeks of preparation every single day. Alhamdulillah. I'm saying this so you won't think that it was something that was just off the top of my head. And so you could know the, the dangers of these people and those individuals. And some, you know, some organizations today are trying to unite and, and work with them. Not knowing that you are working with the biggest hypocrites, the biggest set of munafiqeen you will come across would be the Shia. And the first ones to stab you in the back will be the Shia. And the first people to cooperate with the disbelievers against the Sunnis would be the Shia. And the first people to make us look bad as Muslims are the Shia. And the most filthy, disgusting individuals among the Muslims, if we can still call them Muslims, those of them who are Muslims, are the Shia. They immerse themselves in feces, in urine, of their shuyukh and they worship other than Allah and they call on Al Hassan and Hussein and Ali and Fatima. They are worse than the Jews and the Christians in so many ways. And they are equal, if not worse, than the Hindus and Buddhists in so many other ways. The the mag the magians of this Ummah and the filth of human uh, uh, humans, the Shia who ascribe themselves to Islam. And the reason why they are so much filthier than others is because they claim Islam. You see, if they were just disbelievers who didn't claim Islam and they did what they did, we wouldn't care. We wouldn't care less. All right, let them do them. Let them do them. You know, just another another group of evil, misguided people in the world, whether Satanists or Christians or Jews or whatever. It's just another group of misguided people. Allah will hold them accountable on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. But the problem is these people claim to be representing Islam and not just representing Islam, rather representing a big denomination of Muslims. You understand? So for the, the average non-Muslim, the Shia are Muslims. It's just a different uh, uh, strand of Islam, a different school of thought within Islam. They don't realize what we, the real Muslims, feel about those individuals. So they do so much bad rapport, so much bad propaganda, so much negativity that comes out from their mere ascription to Islam, from their mere claiming, claim, uh, uh, claiming to Islam. The fact that their claimants to Islam does so much damage to the da'wah and to the Muslim identity globally. Name another group of people who will do what they do. Oh, I'll tell you, the Sufis, right behind them in terms of craziness. People stabbing themselves and chopping themselves and burning themselves. Yani, wallah al -azim, is this a religion? Wallah, is this astaghfirullah? To Allah, we complain about those people and what they have done to us and what they've been doing throughout the ages. Be wary, Muslims, you've been warned. وَسُمُّوا رَوَافِضْ لِأَنَّهُمْ رَفَضُوا زَيْدِ بْنِ عَلِيِّ بْنِ الْحُسَيْنِ بْنِ عَلِيِّ بْنِ أَبِي طَالِبِ Why were they called Rafida, the rejectionists? Because they refused and they rejected Zayd, the son of Ali, the son of Al-Husayn, who was the son of Ali بْنِ أَبِي طَالِبِ عندما سألوه, سألوه عن أبي بكر وعمر They asked him about Abu Bakr and Umar. فَأَثْنَ عَلَيْهِمَا So he praised them. He said, these are my, grand, my, my grandfather's ministers. Those are my grandfather's ministers. And then they rejected him accordingly. And so they were known as the Rafida. They like to call themselves Shia. But they're actually, the Shia, as many scholars say, is not an accurate term to describe them. Because the term Shia, in and of itself, is not a negative term. It could be negative, it could be positive. 
who knows an evidence that proves that the term Shia in and of itself cannot be an evil term. Ha ya akhwan. Yalla. Yalla, today is the quiz day. I'm not going to let you off the hook. Yalla, ya hujjaj baytullah al-haram. Hey, tayyib. Ibrahim alayhi salam was from the Shia of Nuh alayhi salam. Wahsh ya fawaz. Wahsh ya fawaz. In Surah al-Safat, after Allah azza wa jal spoke about Nuh, what did Allah say? Wa inna min shi'atihi la Ibrahim. And verily from the from the Shia of Nuh is Ibrahim. La. Sha'air is, is, uh, is something else. It's not actually sha'air li ta'arafu. It's qaba'il. Shu'uban. Shu'uban wa qaba'il. You're missing the word, uh, Juwairiya. You're on a different uh, wave right now. Shahid, it's Surah Safat wa anna min shi'atihi la Ibrahim. So the term Shia in of itself, that's why the scholars say it doesn't, they're not, they're not really worthy of that title. But yani, khalas, we use it, yani, orphan, it's, it's common among the people. Amma nawasib, tabora the nawasib, fahum aladina yansibuna al ada ali al bayt. The nawasib are those who actually show enmity to the Household, the members of the household of the Prophet وسلم, and they attack them وسبونهم, and they uh, uh, revile them. Those are the opponents or the opposite on the opposite spectrum of the Rawafid. So you have the Rawafid, those who uh, hate and curse the Sahaba, and the Nawasib are those who hate and curse the family of the Prophet. So the Rawafid, they uh, attacked or they transgressed against the Sahaba with their hearts and with their tongues. فَفِي الْقُلُوبِ يُبْغِضُونَ الصَّحَابَةِ وَيَكْرَهُونَهُمْ So in their hearts, they hate the Sahaba. They, they detest the Sahaba and they hate them. إِلَّا مَنْ جَعَلُوهُمْ وَسِيلَةً لِنَيْلِ مَأَرِبِهِمْ وَغَلَوْ فِيهِمْ وَهُمْ أَلُوا الْبَيْتِ Except those whom they've used as a means to attain their objectives and they were extreme and excessive about them and those would be the exception meaning the household of the Prophet Sallallahu As for the tongues, they verbally abuse them and they say that they were oppressors. And they claim that all of the Sahaba apostatized, apostatized after the Prophet Sallallahu except a minority. Among many other things which are very well known in their books, things that you can find in their books. Well, in reality, cursing the Sahaba is not only a, a criticism against the Sahaba, may Allah be pleased with them alone, بل هو قطع في الصحابة وفي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وفي شريعة الله وفي ذات العزة وجل. Rather, it is a criticism that is waged against the Sahaba and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and the legislation of Allah and Allah عز وجل himself. Even Allah عز وجل himself. They are basically insulting and criticizing all of them. Why? Let's use reasoning. أما كونه قطحا في الصحابة فواضح. The fact that it is an insult towards the Sahaba, that's clear. They're cursing him. They're cursing him, verbally abusing him. وأما كونه قطحا في رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. As for the fact that it's a قطح, criticism or insult to Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. فحيث كان أصحابه وأمناؤه وخلفاؤه على أمتي من شرار الخلق. This makes his companions and his trustees and his successors the worst of people, the worst of creation. وفيه قطع في رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم آخر and it's also an insult and a criticism against the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in another way وهو تكذيبه فيما أخبر به من فضائلهم والمناقبهم it's also denying and belying what the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said regarding their virtues and their status سبحان الله وأما كونه قطع في شريعة الله as for the the fact that it's an insult towards the legislation of Allah فلأن الوسيطة بيننا وبين رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في نقل الشريعة ومصحابة the the method the the medium 
the medium between us and the Prophet ﷺ in conveying the Sharia to us were the Sahaba. فَإِذَا سَقَطَتْ عَدَالَتُهُمْ If they're unjust, لَمْ يَبْقَ ثِقَةً فِي مَا نَقَلُوا مِنَ الشَّرِيعَةِ We don't have anything reliable to us to, or trust or to be trusted regarding what they conveyed or they transmitted to us from the Sharia. وَأَمَّا كَوْنُهُ قَطْحًا فِي اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ As for why this is an insult to Allah Azza wa Jal Himself. فَحَيْثُ بَعَثَ نَبِيَّهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ سَلَمْ فِي شِرَارِ الْخَلْقِ Allah sent the Prophet ﷺ among the worst of the creation. وَاخْتَارَهُمْ لِصُحْبَتِ And then he chose those worst of people to be his prophets, companions. وَحَمَلَ شَرِعَاتُ وَنَقَلَهَا وَحَمْلِ شَرِعَاتِ وَنَقَلَ لِيُمَتِ And then they made, and he made those people the carriers of the legislation and the one that will convey it to his ummah afterwards. فَانْظُرْ مَاذَا يَتَرَتَّبْ مِنَ الطَّوَامِ الْكُبْرَى عَلَى سَبِّ الصَّحَابَةِ رَضِ الْعَنْهُمْ So pay attention to what becomes a byproduct or the ramification of cursing the Sahaba. May Allah be peace with them. Pay attention to what that entails. May Allah bless you. Look at the result of that. Yani, what are you left? That's why anytime somebody wants to open up the discussion about the Sahaba, and what happened in the early generations, the safest thing we say is just to mind your business. Mind your business, baby. Don't talk about the Sahaba. Don't side with this one against that one. And don't say anything ill. And don't put yourself in a position where you think you're better than them. Because you're not. You never were and you never will be. What they have done and what they have sacrificed for their deen, it will take you another million years and you won't be able to do it because you just missed the train. So keep yourself in check and hold off on this subject. And not everybody should study the history of the uh, disputes that happened among the Sahaba and the early generations. Not everybody should, should, should study this matter. This matter is for people that are well grounded in knowledge and people who could uh, uh, sort it out in their brain. If you are the weak type, and if that's going to mess up with your uh, uh, feelings towards them, then stay away. You know, that's just the general advice. ونحن نتبرأ من طريقة هؤلاء الروافض الذين يسبون الصحابة ويبغضونهم. And we, um, we here, uh, we dis dis disassociate ourselves from the method and the way of the rawafid who verbally abuse the الصحابة and detest them. تمام؟ ونعتقد أن محبتهم فرض and we take the position we hold the position that loving them is obligatory وأن الكف عن مساوئ مساوئهم فرض and that staying away and withholding and holding back from uh, uh, saying anything ill about them is also obligatory وقلوبنا ولله الحمد مملوءة من محبتهم and our hearts and all praise due to Allah our hearts are filled with their love and Allah is my witness that I love all the Sahaba of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and so should you. No matter what, no matter how, no matter what issues they faced, the sinful ones among them, the one who transgressed, the one who made mistakes, they have so much good deeds that it outweighs whatever ishtihadi matters they, got, they fell into and they didn't get the right position. It happens. Some of them did ishtihad, and they were not in agreement. It was not in agreement with the correct position. Allah will reward them for that. You're not in a position to criticize that. Why do we love them? Because of what they were upon of faith, having strong iman and fear of Allah Azza wa Jal and the uh, spreading of knowledge and aiding and assisting and supporting the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. قوله وطريقة النواصب الذين يؤذون أهل البيت بقول بقول أو عمل. And we also declare our innocence and disassociate from those from the way of the nawasib who hurt the family of the Prophet Sallam either by statement or by action. يعني يتبرع أهل السنة الجامعة من طريق من طريقة النواصب. Meaning أهل السنة الجامعة also disassociate themselves from the way of the nawasib. وهؤلاء على عكس الرافضة. Those are the opposite of the رافضة. الذين يغلون في آل البيت. Those who go to extremes 
and exaggerate regarding Al Al Bayt, the, the household of the Prophet. So much so that they take him out from the state of humanity to the state of uh, uh, infallibility and, you know, wilaya being allies with Allah Azza wa Jal. As for the nawasib, فَقَابَلُوا الْبِدْعَةَ بِالْبِدْعَةِ They, uh, they, they uh, reciprocated an innovation with an innovation. So they, they returned a favor by coming with their own innovation. When they saw that the Rafidah were uh, being extreme in regards to their love of the house of the Prophet they said, okay, then we're going to hate the members of the house of the, the, of the Prophet and his relatives and their relatives. In, in an effort to oppose the Rafida in their love and their praise. وَدَائِمًا يَكُونُ الْوَسَطُ هُوَ خَيْرِ الْأُمُورِ خَيْرُ الْأُمُورِ And always and forever, being balanced, balanced is the best way. وَمُقَابَلَةِ الْبِدْعَةِ بِبِدْعَةٍ لَا تَزِيدُ الْبِدْعَةِ إِلَّا قُوَّةِ And opposing, opposing an innovation with another innovation will do nothing except give strength to the innovation. Except that it will strengthen the innovation. And the same thing, my brothers and sisters, can be said about mistakes. Correcting a mistake with a mistake would only make more mistakes. And this happens often in the field of da'wah. A person will make a mistake and then the people in, in an effort to defend themselves, they make another mistake. And then, you know, it, it, just, it just will worsen matters. So, you know, and, and the list goes on. The list goes on. I'll just give you a classic example. Father-son relationship, parents-children relationship. Let's say the parents made an error in judgment, transgressed, oppressed their kids. For whatever reason, they made a mistake. They uh, unjustly uh, accused them of something that they're innocent of. That's an error on the, parts of, on the part of the parents. The child now, if they go on to retaliate and they try to fix the mistake by being undutiful, then... We wound up with nothing. The parents are guilty. And now the children are guilty of a greater crime than the crime of the parents. Because the parents might have had reasons to think what they thought. And even though they're wrong, even that they're wrong, they might be pardoned by Allah. Because according to the mu'tayat or the elements that were available to them in judging, it seemed to be the right judgment. Maybe there's a history that causes them to think or reach a certain conclusion. And then now the children being undutiful because they were oppressed is not going to fix the matter. It's not going to fix the matter. How often does that happen in the household of Muslims? Every day. A lot of people complain to me. You know, my parents are this, my parents are that. What do I do? You, you be patient. You cannot become evil to your parents because they're evil to you. That's just the, that's just the reality. That's just the bottom line. You cannot, if, if your company uh, does you wrong, it doesn't mean now you can become a thief and rob your company back. You cannot fix the wrong with wrong. You cannot fix a bid'ah with a bid'ah. And those who have a heart will take heed and understand. Uh -huh. يعني عما وقع بينهم في النزاع. طيب. And they hold back regarding the disputes that occurred between the Sahaba, meaning all the back and forth and the disputes and the differences that happened. فَالصَّحَابَةُ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَقَعَتْ بَيْنَهُمْ بَعْدَ مَقْتَلِ عُمَرْ بْنِ الْخَطَّابِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ نِزَعَاتِ There were many differences that took place and disputes that happened among the Sahaba after the death of Umar bin al-Khattab. May Allah be pleased with him. وَاشْتَدَّ الْأَمْرُ بَعْدَ مَقْتَلِ عُثْمَانِ And the matter became more severe after the killing of Uthman, after the murder of Uthman, may Allah be pleased with him. And so things happened between them that even led to fighting. Things that led to fighting. And that's why I'm saying not everybody should delve into this issue unless you know your stuff. Just like we say, not everybody should listen to a debate unless you know your stuff. 
Not everybody should read a book of advanced fiqh if they don't have the usul al-fiqh understood because you could take on a position because you you lack the foundation. There are foundational matters that have to be intact. And when you have those things intact, now you are eligible to approach the more advanced topics. Not having the foundations and delving into advanced topics will often create more problems than good. So those who are already on that sound methodology of loving the Sahaba, yes, you could read historically what's happening. Why am I saying this? Because someone, once again, we are forced, my brothers and sisters, to constantly mention the names of other individuals that misuse their platform to cause uh, wreak havoc among the Muslims. So Yasir Qadi, for example, in his library chats, this is a classic example of someone that brings about all of these historical matters that he's so excited about and he makes those public to the people that don't have the foundation and giving a disclaimer in the beginning of a public YouTube uh, video where he says, if you haven't studied this, then please don't watch this or go watch this video before you watch that video or don't watch that video before you watch this video. That doesn't cut it. The bottom line, it's a public video for people to watch on YouTube. It's a public platform accessible to every Tom, Dick and Harry, Abdullah, Rabi and Mustafa. And so he goes and discusses matters of the Sunnis versus the Shia. I'm sorry, Sunnis versus Shia, Asha'ira versus Atharis, uh, the issues of the Sahaba. Those matters that, that are not to be uh, addressed in a public manner and, a, and, and on a public platform to everybody. Because while it will please a group of people that are into this kind of stuff, it will create a lot of doubts for others. Others who, have, who, who should learn these things after they have learned the foundation. Otherwise, people have some Shia tendencies. You mentioned the matters of the Sahaba. Man, I'm telling you, you got to be very, very careful. Those matters are famous, well known. وَقَدْ وَقَعَتْ بِلَا شَكٍ عَنْ تَأْوِيلٍ وَشْتِيَاتٍ And they happen, no doubt, based on their interpretation. Based on them, you know, ishtihad is exerting yourself. Exerting yourself to arrive at the truth. كُلٌّ مِّنْهُمْ يَظُنُّ أَنَّهُ عَلَى حَقٍ Each one of them thought he was upon the truth. وَلَا يُمْكِنْ أَنَّ نَقُولْ إِنَّ عَائِشَ وَالزُّبَيْرِ بْنَ عَوَامْ قَاتَلَا عَلِيَّ رَضَ عَنْهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ وَهُمْ يَعْتَقِدُونَ أَنَّهُمْ عَلَى بَاطِلُ وَأَنَّ عَلِيَّ عَلَى الْحَقِّ Because there's no way that we would say that Aisha and Az Zubair, they fought against Ali, may Allah be pleased with them, while they thought that he was, uh, while they thought that they are upon falsehood and he's upon the truth. How, Yani? You understand? So once you have understood the Sahaba, and you know, you know the the integrity of Az Zubair and the integrity of Aisha and how much Prophet loved her and praised her and so on and so forth, you will understand that this was uh, our mother. Uh, our mother was a as was a prime example of someone that sought the truth at any cost. So when she did her ishtihad, and she thought that what she was doing was right, and Ali thought what he was doing is right, that caused a fight to take place. But everybody was in, in a position where they thought they were upon the truth. Very similar to the uh, disputes that you have today in the da'wah scene. I mean, you have to understand, the, the Diobandis and the uh, uh, Maturidis and the Ash'aris and the Sufis, they genuinely, sincerely think that, you know, we're all Wahhabis and we're all misguided Salafis. You know, they really think that we're off the track. And we really, really believe the opposite of that. We have yaqeen about the opposite of that. What will uh, uh, differentiate and dis make a distinction between us? What will decide and judge between us? The Quran and the Sunnah. The Quran and the Sunnah. So we have evidences from the Quran and Sunnah that prove that what we're upon is right. And they have their maulanas. They have their books of their shuyukh. They can't really get you something solid from the Quran and the Sunnah without having to reject a clear ayah, reject a sahih hadith, or cite a weak hadith. They can't build their uh, foundation from, is, from the Quran and the authentic Sunnah. They can't because it is not on their side. It is not in their favor. It is in our si on our side in our favor. You get what I'm saying? So they resort to other matters and other resources to substantiate their stances and their positions. It's pretty ironic. 
But just like we all think that we're right and they're wrong and they think that they're right, we're wrong. You understand the Sahaba were like this. However, in the case of the Sahaba, this was genuinely a matter of ishtihad, meaning the Quran and the Sunnah were, were, uh, were uh, uh, accommodating to both. And that would fall under another area of the Quran and the Sunnah or the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, where he said that the Qadi, if he makes an effort, ishtihad, and if akhta falahu ajr, if he gets it wrong, he gets one reward. If he if he gets it, uh, oops, I hit the camera with my foot. Check that it didn't move. And if he gets it right, then he will get uh, two rewards. Dude. What is this? طيب على كل حال واعتقادهم أنهم على حق لا يستلزم أن يكونوا قد أصابوا الحق them merely thinking that they're upon the truth does not necessitate that they were actually upon the truth that they actually reached the truth a person may think that he is there but he's not quite there there you have it ولكن إذا كانوا مخطئين but if they were wrong ونحن نعلم أنهم لن يقدم يقدموا على هذا الأمر إلا عن الشهد we know that they will not approach this matter except when doing اجتهاد فإنه ثبت عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أن أنه قال يعني it was proven the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said إذا حكم الحاكم if the ruler if the person in charge if the judge any type of judge in any situation if he if he اجتهد if he makes if he makes اجتهاد if he exerts himself ثم أصاب then he gets it right فله أجران he has two rewards وإذا حكم فاجتهد ثم أخطأ but if he judged after making اجتهاد and he was wrong he will still have a reward فَنَقُولُهُمْ مُخْتِئُونَ مُشْتَهِدُونَ فَلَهُمْ أَجْرُ وَاحِدٌ We say that they were مُشْتَهِدُونَ who were mistaken. So they will still get one reward. And this hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. فَهَذَا الَّذِي حَصَلَ مَوْقِفُنَا نَحْنُ لَهُ مِنْهُ لَهُ جِهَتَانٌ So this had happened, this matter that happened, our stance regarding is that we have two. الْجِهَةُ الْأُولَى The first one, الْحُكْمُ عَلَى الْفَاعِلِ Judging the doer. والجهة الثانية موقفنا من الفاعل and the second one is our position regarding the doer so one is the uh, the ruling concerning the doer and the second one is our our position regarding the doer أما الحكم على الفاعل as for judging the doer فقد سبق أن وأن ما ندين الله ما ندين الله به أن أن ما جرى بينهم فهو صادر عن الشهد we've already said that what we uh, uh, follow as a religion before Allah Azza wa Jal is that whatever happened between them it was a byproduct of ishtihad and when ishtihad takes place and the person who does ishtihad falls into an air he is excused and he is forgiven he is excused and forgiven as for our position regarding the doer our obligation is to refrain from the disputes that happen from from discussing the matters that, that happened between them لماذا نتخذ من فعل هؤلاء مجالا للسب والشتم والواقعة فيهم والبغضاء بيننا why should we take that as a reason to open the door for verbal abuse and cursing and to uh, you know criticize and transgress against them and cause hatred among them ونحن في فعلنا هذا إما آثمون وإما سالمون and when we do this either we are going to be sinful or we're going to be uh, safe أبداً, but we will never gain anything يعني if what you said is right and you're not transgressing then you're you didn't get a reward but you're not you're safe but you didn't get a reward and if you're wrong then you're sinful فالواجب علينا تجاه هذه الأمور أن نسكت عما جرى بين الصحابة so our position the, the obligation upon us Regarding those matters that we remain silent and quiet regarding the differences or the disputes that happen among the Sahaba. That we should not read the news or the history regarding this matter except when we have to review something for a necessity. So my brothers, as I told you earlier, subhanAllah al I told you earlier, you should not go there, you should not watch those uh, uh, videos that discuss this matter, they are meant to create hatred and enmity against the Sahaba. And this is, don't think that this is a call to ignorance. No. It is only the case with the layman. If you're a student of knowledge and you study in this matter is important for you, 
to prove a particular point, Barakallahu feek, go ahead. But it is not for everybody. Just like everything else in this world is not for everybody. You can't just go into, you, you, you could be qualified to read from a website, from Google, some medical issue. Let's say uh, you see some symptoms in your relative or your friend and you don't know, you know, you're not a doctor, but you can go on Google, say how to treat a sprained ankle, for example. And you have enough knowledge to read, uh, you know, what are these websites called? Medcom or Medkim, or I forgot their names right now. I can't think of a single name of them. Where they basically uh, give you uh, basic instructions and guidelines on how to deal with a particular illness or injury. But that's your limit because you don't have any medical qualification. Can you now become a doctor? Or can you now get into the advanced matters and read a medical book because you're able to read some, some website on Google that gives you general guidelines about how to deal with a particular illness or, or an injury? Of course not. So anywhere else in the world, it doesn't apply. Why do you think it will be different in religion rather when religion is even more significant and important? منها ما هو كذب ومنها ما قد زيد فيه ونقص وغير 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 عن وجه الصريح. And he said, and they say that those athar, those uh, uh, references we have that are attributed to the Sahaba, some of them are clear lies. Some of them they've had additions inserted into them. And some of them were removed. And some of them were changed from the actual uh, uh, accurate state that they were in so there's a lot of a lot of playing around with these reports in order to distort them so that they can arrive at the fitna that they want to arrive at so the author divided those reports that are narrated concerning them concerning their masawi uh, is their mistakes their errors and so on and so forth and that's masawihim so he said, Among them are pure lies, invented lies that did not, did not take place with them. وهذا يوجد كثيرا فيما يرويه النواصب في آل البيت وما يرويه الروافض في غير آل البيت. And that is very prevalent in what the nawasib uh, uh, narrate concerning the household of the Prophet ﷺ and what the rawafid narrate concerning the household of the Prophet ﷺ also. So, so one of them would be uh, uh, for in, in, in hatred, the nawasib in hatred, and the rawafid in exaggeration of love. وَمِنْهَا شَيْءْ لَهُ أَصْلٍ And among them are things that have a, have a basis. لَكَنْ زِيدَ فِيهِ وَنُقِّسْ وَغُيِّرَ عَنْ وَجِهِ Or additions were made, uh, uh, or deletions were made, and then or a, a distortion took place of some sort where they changed the original meaning. وَهَذَانِ الْقِسْمَانِ كِلَهُمَ يَجِبُ رَدَّ Both of these should be rejected. القسم الثالث, the third one, ما هو صحيح, that which is authentic. فماذا نقول فيه? What do we say concerning that? بيّن المؤلف بقولي, the, the author explains saying, والصحيح منه هم فيه معذورون. As for what is uh, authentically attributed to them, then they are excused in this regard. إما مشتهدون مصيبون, either they did اجتهاد and they were right, وإما مشتهدون مخطئون, or they had done اجتهاد and they were mistaken. There's no third one. Tamam. Either one reward or two rewards. Whichever way you look at it, either they got one reward or two rewards. When you speak ill about them, you get nothing but sin. And you become a mubtadi'ah. So what did you get? Fimt? Fimt al-harja? Fimt al-tabkha? Fimt al-baharat? Wal-mushtahid in asab falahu ajran. So the one who exerts himself, if he gets it right, he gets two rewards. wal akhta falahu ajr wahd. If he's wrong, he gets one reward. بقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم as we said earlier إذا حكم الحاكم فشتاه ثم أصاب فله أجر وإذا حكم فشتاه ثم أخطى فله أجر so the clear hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that says that the one who judges if he gets it right he gets two rewards if he gets it wrong he gets one reward فما جرى بين بين معاوية وعلي رضي الله عنهما صادرا عن اجتهاد وتأويل so whatever difference happened between معاوية and علي it was due to this ishtihad and interpretation. لكن لا شك أن عليا أقرب إلى الصواب الصواب فيه من معاوية. No doubt that Ali was closer to the correct position in in this regard than Muawiyah was. 
Rather, we almost reached the point of certainty regarding the fact that Ali was more correct. Except that the truth of the matter is that Muawiyah, he was doing ishtihad regarding the matter. What proves that Ali was closer to the uh, correct position uh, the Prophet ﷺ has said, woe or woe to Ammar or wayh could be interpreted in many ways as like a, a type of calling or making dua for someone. So may Allah be pleased, may Allah bless, may Allah have mercy on Ammar. He will be killed by the transgressing group. He will be killed by the transgressing group. فَكَانَ الَّذِي قَتَلَهُ أَصْحَابُ مُعَاوِيَةِ The people who killed him were the companions of Muawiyah. And Prophet ﷺ said, made dua for Ammar that he will be killed by the rebellious uh, 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 group. And those were the friends or the companions of Muawiyah. وَبِهَذَا عَرِفْنَ أَنَّا فِئَةٌ بَاغِيَةٌ خَارِجَةٌ عَنَ الْإِمَامِ By that we know that that was the transgressing rebellious group that went against the Imam. لَكِنَّهُمْ مُتَأْوِلُونَ But they were... They were following a particular interpretation of the matter. This was their ishtihad. And either way, the, the correct position is with Ali. Whether we say this can, uh, decisively or with a high probability, يعني, more, uh, more or less it was with Ali. Uh, yeah, we'll leave that till the next week inshallah because it's going to get more exciting uh, yalla tamam let's see what y'all got everybody loves the Q&A everybody loves the Q&A uh, yalla ya hujjaj baitullah al-haram Asking on behalf of a friend, a friend's mom start to feel starts to feel sleepy after a bit when she's reciting the Quran, but doesn't feel sleepy if she does something else. What can they be the reason? The shaitan. The shaitan doesn't want anybody to recite the Quran, so it's from the shaitan. Seek refuge with Allah and be persistent, and drink a cup of espresso. Make it a double shot. What? Who was your favorite warrior Sahabi? Of course, it has to be Khalid bin Walid. It has to be Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu arda. Come on, man. What is your opinion on da'wah man quitting da'wah for seeking knowledge? Excellent move. Wallahi, I support that a million percent. I am all for it. If somebody has that opportunity, come to their feet. You know, I would do this. I would do this with, without hesitation. If I was financially... Uh, stable if I didn't have to work and I had to choose between and uh, I have time I have time I have to choose between giving da'wah or learning of course I will go learn go learn and then give da'wah inshallah and even if you don't let's say you learn and you die and you don't wind up giving da'wah but you intended your intention was to learn in order to give people proper da'wah Allah will give you the reward of the da'wah that you would have made even though you didn't make it you're dealing with Allah Azza wa Jal. So if somebody has that opportunity come to them, capitalize on it, Habibi, with your eyes closed. But not everybody gets that privilege. So, وَفَقَهُ اللَّهُ وَيَسَّرَ أَمْرَهُ نعم. Pedro. Salam, is it permissible to wear basketball jerseys like from the Bulls or Bucks that have the bull and the deer? I mean, if the, if the actual uh, logo... Or whatever that thing on the shirt is, it does not resemble the actual animal. It's a, it's a cartoonish resembling of the animal. It's fine. If it looks exactly like Allah's creation, then it's not permissible. Is it haram to type swear words but put punctuation marks in between? So it's not the full word, but you get the idea of what's being said. It should be avoided. I cannot tell you if it's haram or not haram, but it should be avoided. What is your view on being an online or offline student of the International Da'wah Training Program, which is conceived 
developed and conducted by Dr. Zakir Naik and his son Farak Naik. I don't know, Akhi. I don't know much about it. I don't know much about it, but I would recommend that a person studies Islam and not comparative religion. Zakir Naik approach is comparative studies and comparative religion and how to, you know, refute uh, Hindus and Buddhists or whatever. It's a good field, but that should not be your primary field. You should focus on talab al-ilm according to the traditional way and the traditional method. Yeah. Plus, you know, we've said in the past, uh, Brother Zakir has some issues. He has some issues. May Allah forgive us and forgive him. Is it okay to wipe over socks that show the skin when it is looked at closely, but the skin does not show when it's looked at in a normal distance? That's fine. You can wipe over them, inshallah. I have beard and I am 14, inshallah. It's not like the real beard, but it's like the hair and the head. Is it permissible to trim it? No. Why? Doesn't matter. You cannot trim it, man. Why would he mean sideburns? In Jum'ah khutbah, if someone accidentally touches someone and says, sorry, is he sinful? What about saying, I mean, during the dua? You say, I mean, with your lips, without actually speaking. During the dua. As for touching someone saying, sorry, if you said it by mistake, you're fine. If you said it by mistake, you're fine. If you purposely spoke during Juma, then yes, you are sinful and you lose the reward of Juma. That's not sleeveless, yeah, Pedro. They they are the sleeves. How do you say? How do you have the same shirt? Just because it's blue, خلاص الله. Anybody who has blue has the same shirt. Yours is sleeveless, mine is sleeve full. Um, can you clarify Sheikh Ibn Uthameen's statement in Aqidah al where he said we cannot negate tasbih to Allah in the absolute sense because every two, th every two things which ex exist must have some similarity? Um, I don't understand what you're saying. Tashbih to Allah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, we've explained that in the class, bro. Go back to the uh, earlier uh, classes on, uh, you know, matters of Asma and Sifat. Please go back to the dars. We've explained everything in due time during the class. Now, I saw a very beautiful Christian in my city and I liked her. I told this to my mother and she told me to get to know her. That's it? Okay, well... And that I can change her with time. What would what is what would Ustad advise me since I'm in a country of unbelievers? Well, I would advise you to <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Where do I begin advising you? Well, you want to make your mommy happy, but not like that. Uh, what is this get to know her business, Yani? How are you gonna get to know this Christian lady without creating or having a, a, a romantic relationship of some sort? It's very difficult. Um, it's very difficult. Now, I understand that there are circumstances where you can come across someone who's not Muslim and they become Muslim and it could be you know, a successful uh, marriage afterwards, but you don't want to do that while knowing that you're going to fall into haram. Like uh, it happened to a lot of people who didn't know any better. you know. Or even if they do better, it doesn't mean you can tell others to do the same right now. So you're in a very tough situation, I'll tell you the least. Um, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that you based your uh, this whole thing on liking her based on you looking at her which was a problem in the first place should have lowered your gaze and now that you like her now you have to get to know her and she's a disbeliever so she's going to be way too loose and way too you know comfortable with things that islam does not allow all while you're trying to you know what wali what wali She's a, she's a Christian. She's not going to have a wali. Her father's not even a wali. By the way, in Islam, yeah, Izhar. Please don't give your own fatwa on, on our channel, yeah, Captain. Even if she becomes a Muslim, uh, you know, you, she, uh, her father would not be a the Christian father. If she, oh, if she, you mean if she remains Christian? Yeah, but it's not advised. It's not advised. 
Tell your mom, uh, let me find a, a, a good Muslim sister and call it a day. Yeah, you're right, Azar. You're right, you're right. Man, if he was going to marry her as a Christian, but that's still not her wali. It's still, it's going to be her father, but it's not her wali in Islamic terms. If he's, they're non-Muslims. Next. While trimming mustache, the razor keeps touching me. Check. <laughs> touching my cheek, which cuts the hair as well. What to do? Is it sin? Stop. Yeah, it is. You should be able to. What? How is it that when you're trimming your, your mustache, you're going all the way to your beard? Yeah, Sheikh. Control what's going on, yeah, Mustafa. Go to a barber. Let him do the job for you. Yalla, next. What is your message to Ahlul Bid'ah in Malaysia? Also, your right keeps keeping skeleton houses creepy. Man, the English today is off the charts, mashallah, tabarakallah. I don't know what's with the typing. Cheek became check, creepy became creepy. To make it two crap, Habibi. One with Natalla and banana, and one with strawberry and uh, chicken. Al Muhim. Uh, well, what is what do you mean? What is your message to Al I mean, war wick of Florence. You make it sound, Akhi, like Ahlul Bid'a of Malaysia are all sitting in a big stadium waiting for me, and then I'm going to answer the question here. Then you're going to play my answer on this humongous platform where the entirety of the Bid'a engaging Malaysians will be like, Oh, embrace us, embrace us with Abu Mus'ab's valuable input and then as soon as i tell them ya ahlul bid'a fi malaysia leave the bid'a alone and come back to the sunnah and they're all going to like repent left and right and bid'a is going to be eradicated from malaysia and everybody's going to be up on the sunnah what kind of uh, dingy bingy jiggy jiggy is this yani <laughs> By the way, my message to Al Bid'a in Malaysia is the same one to Al Bid'a in Pakistan and in Lebanon and, and everywhere in the world. Anywhere there's Al Bid'a, we say, leave the Bid'a alone, come back to the Sunnah. I mean, what do you want me to say? Yo, what do you mean? What is my nasiha? What is nasiha? What do you want me to say? My whole watch, okay, watch One Way to Paradise. Subscribe, like, and share everything on One Way to Paradise because that whole channel is anti Bid'a pro Sunnah. يلا hey, is there any islamic housing loans that are halal in the uae i called the al-kafir and they told it's all right take a loan from any islamic bank i don't know i i i'm skeptical about any i am skeptical about any loan from a bank i'll tell you that much i'm, I'm of the position that uh, leave that alone find a good brother who's willing to loan you money with nothing in return except a dua he doesn't even ask you for the dua you should make dua for him on your own yeah yeah for that person invite that sister or the sister invite that christian lady to go to the masjid and have sisters give her da'wah and to the one whom your mom told you to go know her mashallah tabarakallah know her yell I had a question with brothers about the issue of specific takfir. I was of the opinion that only shiukh are allowed to bring a hujjah, but now I'm doubtful. Are we obliged to make specific takfir? Uh, no, you're not obliged to make specific takfir. Why would you be obliged to make specific takfir? There might be aspects that you are unaware of. And it's, Allah did not make it obligatory on you to pass takfir on people. Now. Nah. Slight makeup that does not change how you look and is used to cover dark circles, spots permissible, like when removing facial hair for women is allowed as both are removing, which is unsightly, unfeminine. Where though? In which context? So she's going to remove, uh, she's going to put makeup and then go out in the public? Then no, it's not allowed. Because it's, it's a form of beautification. Even if she's uh, hiding something which is unfeminine, uh, that still, uh, you know, facial hair is definitely un, 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 uh, unfeminine, but having dark circles is masculine feminine. If you don't sleep well, if you don't take care of yourself, you have some sort of health issue, you're going to have dark spots, dark circles. So no, no, you cannot put makeup. No, it's not, a not okay.
يلا يا حاج استاذ some feminists ask me about why there are only male scholars in Islam and not female ones I told them about Aisha they said what about modern ones yeah tell them because uh, it's not women's job to be scholars it's the job of men to be scholars that's why Allah selected the prophets to be scholars uh, to be uh, the prophets to be men all men all prophets were men so in Islam in Islam that role is primarily for males there could be female scholars no problem but it is not something that is uh, encouraged in and of itself and that's what Islam teaches you don't like it no problem you can stay be a, you can stay a feminist until you die and then be ready for the aftermath when you meet Allah enjoy your feminism meanwhile and keep pushing an agenda that is not in line with human biology and common sense يا فيمنست يا تعبانة uh, What action can, be, can we do to be blessed with Allah's laugh, smile? We are running Aqid alhamdulillah So how can we be practically maintain 100% Tawheed in our day-to-day -day lives? Well, by, by learning I mean there's no other way for you فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكْ Allah says to the Prophet ﷺ, know that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah and then seek forgiveness for your sins and for the believers. So you have to learn. You continue to learn and that's how you remain uh, in the right course so that Allah Azza wa is pleased with you. Now. Yalla, yalla, yalla. Does it matter which nisab level we should take for zakah, gold or silver? Uh, this these kind of questions, please refer to Islam QA. Uh, they're not my field. I'm not well versed in the matters of uh, uh, fiqh, specifically that of zakah. Now, I know my my limits. Uh, voluntary prayers done silent or loud. Um, either you could do either. How to convince super Hanafis that Asr isn't at 5 p.m. Uh, good luck with that. Should ties be cut with apostate parents? No. Is chest still haram if we break off the horse head? Well, the problem is not with the horse. The problem is with chess in and of itself. Uh, and from what I know, it is not haram to play chess. So that was smart for you to put seven questions in one question. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. I hope you don't give others ideas. How do you... How do you get your left earlobe to look so nice? What? This? This looks nice, Ya Mustafa. Allah yahdik. Allah yahdik, Ya Mustafa. Uh, no, I like the fact that I say, how do you get? Yani you, do you imagine me before the class, I go in front of the mirror and I say, okay, let me see now. What am I going to do to this ear over here? And I put some, you know, what, yani, like, what, what do I do? Yani? I change this design, مثلاً. I, I move around this bone. It was, if it's a little crooked, I straighten it out and add some, you know, flowers over here and have a little garden. And then I come and present myself before you so you can all look at my ears and say, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, look at the left earlobe of Brother Abu Mus'ab. It's out of this world. Ishbak ya Mustafa. Alhamdulillah, I put on a shirt. That's all I do. Ask my family. I put on a shirt. I come over here. You often see me combing my beard during the class with my hands. Shtibi ya boy. Yalla. Last question. I know like this pursue ex excellence is like what happened? Uh, Ustad, can we eat a pancake for breakfast? Is it healthy? Uh, no. If you're eating the regular pancake, no. But... If you're eating homemade pancake that is made with certain ingredients, like the ones I eat, mashallah, tabarakallah, then yes, by all means, it's made from oats and banana and uh, with a blueberry and strawberry and uh, berry, cherry toppings and almonds and cashews and I don't know what else we used to put on that. Some really off-the-hook stuff. Uh, so those pancakes that are homemade are banging. 
And yes, I would recommend that you eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you want to get thinner. All right. 2.30. Mark has been hit. Time to jet to the gym. Inshallah ta'ala, it's gym time. And those of you who follow me on Facebook or follow One Way to Fitness on Instagram, then you know that we get busy, very, very busy at the gym where there are no women, alhamdulillah, for this blessing of Allah. Yalla, have fun uh, under the sun and uh, make sure that you bring into this world a daughter and a son. Yeah.